Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we'll be unboxing Elethane's Soul Raid from Diachasm Underworlds. Here we go, here's Elethane's Soul Raid, the final expansion from this season's Warhammer Underworlds, and this is from the Diachasm season. And this is a great looking set, and this brings the Ideneth Deepkin into the world of Warhammer Underworlds. This is the first time we'll have seen them playing in it. So really excited to get these open and have a look at the miniatures. So in this video, we'll do an unboxing, go through all the contents, and then what I'll do is I'll build the miniatures so you can see them all assembled, and then we can pick through the cards, and I'll go through quickly all the cards that are included so you get a good idea of what's in there, and then just pick out a few of the main ones that kind of catch my eye to go through in detail. I will also look at the fighter cards in detail as well. So right away on the front cover of the box, we've got some great artwork and the way they've gone with Diachasm and Beastgrave and even before that with Night Vault and Shadespire, I really like the aesthetic of Warhammer Underworlds. It's really totally different to like Warcry and even Age of Sigmar. So I really like that. And then you can see that in each of these boxes, they're easy to build miniatures and you don't need glue, but I do like to glue them and you'll see later how I trim them just to get some nice neater fits when we put them together. And then we're going to find out how to construct our deck and then with the expansion we can battle our rivals and the other expansions that have been released. And then on the back it tells us what we're going to get. So we're going to get five easy to build miniatures and this is the actual size. And then in there we're going to get five fighter cards, 32 of the Elethane Soul Raid and 30 Universal Upgrade Ploy Spell and Objective cards. And here's all the miniatures that we're going to see as well. So really good selection, but let's get it open and see what's inside. Okay, let's get started. So I've been really looking forward to this set to come out and this just arrived today. And what a great season it's been for Warhammer Underworlds. I think every single miniature has just been fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to seeing these. They look great in the previews we've seen, but um, let's see what they're like for real in the flesh. So here we go. All these sets come in this nice little tray, which keeps everything nice and neat and organized and protects the cards somewhat as well. And so it looks like we're gonna get one, two sprues, and then there's gonna be five miniatures in here all together. And then we're gonna get our cards all in this little um, sealed package here so that's all nice and neat and tidy so let's go through the sprues first and then we'll open the cards and take a look at them all individually and here's our first sprue and just like with all the underworld sets all the bases are pre-formed and I love that it saves a ton of time doing the bases and the details are fantastic and these are really great with all the different shells and you can see here we've got the seashell and the starfish and some little bits of debris so that's looking great this must be that crab's um, body there, so that's good. So he's not going to be huge, but he's certainly going to be an interesting character to have on the battlefield. But it's this fish that I like, this piranha looking fish that I'm looking forward to seeing. And that's quite a decent size actually, bigger than I thought it was going to be. So that's really cool. So it's certainly going to be as big as a regular kind of human style miniature. But that's the first sprue. Some really nice details, as we expect by now. Uh, but this piece looks really great as well. This kind of harpoon or spear going on. Or is it a fishing rod? I'm not sure what it is. We'll find out when it's built. I think it's a harpoon, but it looks awesome. There we go. That's the first one. And then let's check out the second sprue. Again, we've got this great detail. So here, I think this one might be the one for the crab, maybe, because we've got like a shield underneath it. So that's going to be awesome. And then with the crab, it's a very basic crab. So there's no like armor or anything on it. So having that little bit of metallic armor is going to work out nicely. And there's his claws. He's going to be quite big. Yeah, he's going to be quite big. That's really cool. And um, we've got a nice banner there as well, is it? Or is that the cloak? No, that's a cloak. So that looks like the back of the cloak. But really great. So there's all the sprues. But now we've seen those in detail. Let's have a look at the cards. Okay, let's get these opened up. And so in this little pack, we get our universal cards and our specific cards for the warband. And then in here, we're going to see the fighter cards. And then the objective and power cards. And then we also get a little card in these boxes that tells us a little bit about the warband and what they're doing in Warhammer Underworlds, how they fit in with the game. This little bit of card just protects everything. And then we've got our instruction booklet which we'll have a quick look at now. 
So really nice and easy to put together. Push fit, it's not gonna take long at all. And uh, But when I build them, I do trim off the little connections and then I get a better seal and then I glue it together. Cause I wanna paint these, so you want them to last and be strong. So gonna be really easy to build, won't take long at all. So that's our little instruction book. And here's our little card again. So this is gonna tell us all about Elethane Soul Raid. And it tells us that over the centuries, the Ideneth Deepkin of the Iron Rack Enclave had visited Beastgrave many times, claiming countless souls from the silent people with which they might ensure their own survival. The celebrated Isharan soul render Elethane was tasked with leading the last foray and took with him his soul-bound thrall to male, the bond beast Dewinclaw, and his sworn Ishlian escort, Furin. The tides of the Ethersea surged around the Ideneth as they entered the mountain, where they discovered a terrible truth. The silent people were gone. Furin claimed her master was cursed and named him ill-fated, for the party could not afford to return without their spectral bounty. Elethane was unmoved, amidst Diachasm's depths, he swore to reap the souls of all who had heard the mountain's call instead. So there we go, there's a great introduction to the Ideneth Geepkin in Warhammer Underworlds. And so these little cards are great and included in every single expansion you get. So a real good introduction that gets you into the narrative of the warband you've chosen. Now let's have a look at the fighter cards. And so here you can see we've got Tamel, Spinefin, Furan, Elethane, Ill-Fated, and Doing Claw. And then on the back, we've got their inspired side. And we'll go through these in detail once I've built the miniatures. So, but looking great. I love the artwork of, um, of Underworlds and these aren't disappointing at all, really cool. Okay, now let's have a look at the power cards and these will be the universal power cards. So this will give us a good, a good idea of the artwork again. So I'll just flick through these and, and when we've built them, I'll pick out some of the main ones so we can have a look closer at them. So looking awesome, love it. And now we should start seeing all the different war bands that have been released for this season in these cards now. So we should get a nice mix of all the different ones. Seeing the Crimson Court there, I'll see our Bone Reapers. I love seeing the silent people, so it's great when these pop up. Mask of the silent people, that's a good card. There we go, so really nice. That's So that's the universal power cards. Then we've got the universal objective cards. Let's have a look through these. So again, we should start seeing all the different war bands now that have been released for this whole season. And it's been a great season, really impressive. There's those, and now let's look at the power cards that are specific to the Ideneth Deepkin. And we're off to a great start with Brain Barnacles. <laughs> Can't wait to read through that. That looks crazy. What a great piece of artwork. Chill Mist. So these are awesome. Can't wait to read through them all. And now we've got all the expansions. I'm really gonna sit down and start going deep into these cards for all the different expansions and really learning about this. And if you haven't seen it already, then check out my How to Play Underworld series where I'm going through every single rule from the rule book with using examples on the battlefield with the miniatures and all the stuff you get in the Diachasm set. But this is great. I mean, I'm not disappointed with this artwork at all. Really nice. Now we're on to the upgrades. But Brain Barnacles is a great way to get started with that set. I mean, just for the name. It's got to be worth included in your deck. But there we go. Now let's have a look at the objective cards for the Ideneth Deepkin. And hopefully we'll get some really cool artwork on here too. Yeah, it's looking great. Here they are going up against Kagra. Nice. That's a nice one. So really looking forward to reading through these. And again, we'll look at them in close detail. I'll pick out a few of the best ones. That's a good picture. I'll pick out a few of the um, best cards when we look at the miniatures assembled. So great, so there's a flick through of all the cards and we've seen the sprues now. So I'll go away, get these miniatures built and then we can see them really kind of up close and personal and then go through all their fighter cards in detail and a few of the objective and power cards too. And so just putting them together was really easy. Just trim them off the sprues and then tidy them up with a little scalpel blade and then glued them together and it didn't take long at all. Maybe 20 minutes to get them all assembled. And then here they are all lined up looking awesome. So now we'll have a look at them individually alongside their fighter cards. 
Okay, let's get started with Elethane Ill-Fated. And you can see at the top left-hand side here, we've got the image that matches the miniature. And then we've got the name Elethane Ill-Fated. And because we've got the crown symbol, that tells us that Elethane is the leader. And then we've got the Ideneth Deepkin rune mark over there. And then the first weapon is a Talon Sickle. And for this, it's a range of one. We get three dice looking for the smash symbol, and that's going to cause two points of damage. So pretty powerful, this one. And then we've got another weapon called Soul Net, which has got a range of three. And then we get two dice to attack with, and we're looking for these daggers, these cross dagger symbol. And then this deals a damage of one. And Elethane's got a movement of four. Get one dice to roll in defense, looking for the block symbol. And then we've got four wounds that they can take. And then up here, we've got the condition that we're looking for for Elethane to inspire and simply inspires in the second round. And then we've got some abilities. And so we've got Flood Tide and it says to see Furin's fighter card. So we'll check that out in a little while. But we've also got Soul Harvest and you'll see that that's linked to both weapons. And this is a reaction. And after this attack action, if it takes an enemy fighter out of action and there is no friendly to male on the battlefield, place a friendly to male on a starting hex in your territory. So that sounds pretty good. It looks like you can bring a player back onto the battlefield if they've been taken out. So that's pretty interesting. But let's flip the card and take a look at the inspired side of the fighter card. And now we can see the inspired side. And so this has remained the same here, but you can see we've got some keywords now. So now we've got cleave and ensnare added. And we've also got ensnare added here. But this has also gone up from two fury dice to three fury dice symbols. So, oh, and we've also got an improved movement allowance here. So the distance that this fighter can travel is now five. So we're getting quite a few benefits here to this inspired side. Um, but checking this section out, it says here, Ebb Tide. At the start of the third round, this fighter is uninspired. So this is really kind of pushing that idea that the tide, the, they're attacking in, in like a force. So I imagine they'll all be inspiring in the second round and then all uninspiring in the third. So that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. But let's just take a look at this section here, at those abilities and see if they've changed. And it looks like they're exactly the same. So there we go. So that's our first fighter. And that's our leader, Elethane. And this is the inspired card. Next up, we've got Furin. And this is going to tell us they're a hunter. And they've got one weapon called Hell Saber. It's got a range of one, three attacks, looking for that fury symbol. And they're going to deal two points of damage. They inspire in the second round. Got a movement four. They're looking for the dodge symbol and they get two attack dice for that and they can take three wounds. And then they've got an ability here called Flood Tide. And when activated, this fighter can make a move action or charge action if it has one or fewer move tokens. This ability can also be used by Elethane and it seems pretty good. So if you want to activate the same fighter twice during your turn, then they can get an extra move or charge action, even if they have one move token. So this is pretty interesting. And so really getting the idea that they're pushing forward in these waves and you can really drive them towards the enemy. So that's pretty interesting. But let's flip the card and take a look at Furin Inspired. So here we can see that the numbers have remained the same here, but the symbol has changed. Now for the attack roll, instead of the Fury symbol, we've got the Smash symbol. So this is making them a little bit tougher. And again, this changes. So at the start of the third round, this fighter becomes uninspired and they do get an extra movement here as well. So that goes from four to five. So they get a little bit extra movement for being inspired. You'll also notice that the defense symbol has changed from dodge to block. So that's going to help them as well. And this ability uh, section here, that's also changed. And it now says when the energies of the Ether Sea surge strongest, the Ishlian guard Furin strikes with lightning speed, falling upon her chosen foe with all the uncontrollable fury of a storm sea. So this doesn't mean anything towards like the rules or the gameplay. This is just adding some narrative. And so we don't have to use this where the rules are concerned. Next up, we've got Tamel, and this is another hunter. You'll see we've got the hunter keyword here. And the first weapon is the Riptide Harpoon. And this has got a range of two. We're looking at two attack dice with the smash symbol, dealing two points of damage. And we've also got the Riptide keyword. 
Then down here we've got another one, Throne Harpoon, and that's got range of three, three attack dice with the Fury symbol dealing one point of damage, and the keywords for this are Riptide and Impact. And this fighter's got a movement of four, one defense dice looking at the dodge symbol, and this one has got three wounds. Just like the other fighters we've seen, the inspired condition is just simply when it is the second round. We've got the Flood Tide ability that we've already seen, but now we've got this new one called Rip Tide. And it says that in the drive back step, push the target one hex instead of driving the target back. And it's also got for impact, add one damage when made during this fighter's charge action. So some really nice abilities there. I think these could be pretty useful. So all round a good interesting start to Tamail, but let's flip the card and see what the inspired side looks like. So here we've got the inspired card and you'll see that the numbers have stayed the same, but we do have this new keyword now in snare on both weapons and Tamail has got an extra movement. So it's now a movement of five and two defense dice instead of one. And then here we see again, once it's the third round, this fighter is uninspired and the abilities remain exactly the same. Now we're on to a great looking fighter. I really like this miniature and this is Spinefin. And now you'll see this is gonna be a little bit different because this doesn't look like a fighter at all. So let's read through and see how we're gonna be able to use this fighter or miniature in the game. And so we'll see that it's uh, again to inspire, it's simply in the second round. We've got quite a bit of text here and no usual statistics, so no weapons, but there's no movement either. So the movement is zero. The defense is one dice looking for the dodge symbol and can only have one wound. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but let's have a read through and hopefully this will give us a bit more information. So let's start with this section called Small Fry. You can decide not to set up this fighter during setup. This fighter cannot make actions, be given upgrades or hold objectives. If it would be taken out of action, remove it from the battlefield and clear all counters and persisting effects from this fighter. It is not taken out of action. Okay, and then we've also got this little section called Shoal, and this is a reaction. After an opponent's power step, pick one. Remove all friendly Shoal tokens from the battlefield and place the Shoal token in an empty hex, or place this fighter in an empty hex that contains a friendly Shoal token, and then remove that token. You can take this reaction even if this fighter is not on the battlefield. Okay, so this sounds interesting, and I haven't seen anything like this so far from the cards and the fighters that I've unboxed and looked at, um, but it's really pushing this idea of the wave. So, so it comes off the battlefield, then it can come back on, off and on, off and on, as much as you like. Um, so yeah, pretty interesting, but I guess we'll have to see how this works out in gameplay. But let's flip the card and see what spine fins like when they're inspired. So here we go, spine fins inspired, and you can see now that this has remained the same except for here. We can now roll two dice looking for the dodge symbol. And the inspired action here, at the start of the third round, the fighter becomes uninspired, just the same as all the other fighters in the warband. And all the abilities and the text here remains the same. Now we've got our final fighter, Dewin Claw, and you can see we've got the name here, and then he's got one weapon, which is Crushing Claw, and that's a range of one, making two attacks, looking for the Fury symbol, dealing two points of damage, gonna inspire in the second round along with the other members. Got a movement of three, two defense, looking at the block symbol, and can take three wounds. And then now we've got the ability, so let's read through those, starting with this one, Beast. This fighter, cannot be given attack action upgrades and cannot hold objectives. And they've also got the other one, Scuttle. This is a reaction. After another friendly fighter's activation, push this fighter one hex closer to that fighter. Okay, so this is pretty interesting again, really interesting warband so far. You're not gonna be given attack upgrades, action upgrades, and it can't hold objectives. But with this scuttle reaction, it looks like you're gonna be using Dewing Claw to reinforce your other fighters and give them some support. So I guess that's the main role of this guy. And it says after another friendly fighter's activation, you can push this fighter uh, one hex closer to that fighter. So potentially, you don't even have to move this particular fighter 
during a round, you can simply like activate all your others and then just push this one closer and closer to them. So that's really interesting. So combining that with spine fin, some really different rules here to incorporate into game. So pretty interested how this will play out. But again, we've got to get them on the battlefield to, to see how it will work. But let's flip the card and see the inspired Dewin Claw. And here we go, here's Dewin Claw inspired. And you can see that this has remained the same here. But we do have an extra dice to roll now for our attack. So that takes us up to three, looking for that Fury symbol. And we've also gained a keyword called Cleave. And again, like the other fighters, we're going to uninspire after the th oh, at the start of the third round. And our abilities, they all remain the same. So there we go, that's all the fighters now. So let's take a look at some of the objective and power cards. And I'll pick three from the Universal deck and three from the deck that's specific to the Ideneth Deepkin and then we'll have a close look at those. Right, so here's the first card I've chosen. This is the objective card from the Universal deck and we know it's Universal because of this symbol that we can see here. And it says, come out, come out, wherever you are. And it's got the hybrid keyword. Score this in an end phase if two or more friendly hunters and at least one enemy quarry are in the same territory or one or more enemy fighters each have three or more wound counters. So I like this because we've got three hunters in the Ideneth Deepkin Warband. So we've got Elethane, Furin and Tamel are all hunters. So I thought that would fit in nicely with them. So now let's look at the upgrade card from the Universal deck. And this one I've gone for is Mask of the Silent People. And this is a silent relic. Donning this mask brings down a curse on the wearer and all who behold them. This fighter is a quarry. If this fighter is a quarry, each enemy fighter is a quarry. So I think that ties in with the other one as well. And I just like the artwork on this. And then finally, from the Universal deck, I've gone for a ploy called Silence Descends. A moment of stillness and dread, a hush in which fighters do not dare to breathe. Give one move token to each fighter in no one's territory. So I thought that was pretty cool. So if we can get the enemy advancing into our territory and they're kind of in those um, no one territory hexes, then we can give them a move token and that's going to stop them coming at us again. So I thought that was quite an interesting ploy to use. And so I've included that from the universal deck. All right, now let's have a look at some of the cards from the deck that's exclusive for the Ideneth Deepkin. And here I've picked an objective card first called Surge in Tide. And we know this is for the Ideneth because we've got their rune mark up here. And it says, these devils are swifter than thought. And that's a quote from Kagra the Usurper. And this is a Surge. Score this immediately after one friendly fighter's second or subsequent move action in the same phase. So I thought this fits in with the fighter cards that we've seen earlier and it kind of builds on that idea of their attacking in like waves, like a tide. So I really like this one as our first card from their deck. But now let's look at an upgrade. And the upgrade card I've chosen is called Born From Agony. Compared to the agony of existence, this is nothing. And this is gonna add one to wounds, but also lethal hexes cannot deal damage to this fighter. And this is restricted to Ideneth. And so it's got that Ideneth keyword. So you'll notice here on the fighter card that we've got three fighters. We've got Tamel, we've got Furin, and we've got Elethane. And they've all got the Ideneth keyword here. But the two, Dewinclaw and also Spinefish, they don't have that keyword. So they're not going to be able to use this Born From Agony upgrade. And so it only applies to the three fighters with that Ideneth keyword. And the final card I've chosen to have a look at is called Brain Barnacles. And I had to pick this one. The image is great and the name too. And it just says here, something on your mind. Choose one enemy fighter within three hexes of one or more friendly Ideneth. The chosen fighter has minus one to their move to a minimum of zero. In addition, if the chosen fighter is within one hex of one or more friendly Ideneth, when this card is played, that fighter's attack actions have the Fury characteristic. This effect persists until the end of the round or until that fighter is out of action. So apart from the name and the image on here, I think this is a pretty interesting card that could be really useful in your deck. So that's a pretty interesting warband and we've gone through all their fighter cards and some of the objectives and the 
power cards too and I think it's going to be really fun to get these on the tabletop and see exactly how they perform but really interesting to see Spinefish especially and um, also Dewing Claw see how that's going to happen and how he's going to be able to back up those Ideneth fighters and support them as they kind of get stuck in and do some attacks but really interesting but I'd love to hear what you think about this warband and if you've picked them up have you got the set and if you've played them already what do you think about their abilities and also what are some of your favorite cards from the decks that were included but it'd be great to hear from you so join in in the comment sections below if you're new to warhammer underworlds so i would like to learn how to play then check out my how to play series where i go through the whole rule book and then show some examples in video so you can see exactly how to play and i recommend some great sets that include diachasm or beast grave to get started with I'll put a link in the description to Element Games where you can pick up this warband and also all the other expansions that have been released as well as the main game for Diachasm or Beastgrave and they're both great core sets to get started if you haven't played Underworlds yet. And there'll be affiliate links but it won't cost you anything extra, in fact you can save up to 20% there on the RRP on all your game products, even your paints. And for every sale made through a link, I get a small commission and that helps me do loads of videos like this. So thanks for supporting the channel and for helping me keep these videos going. I really appreciate it. So thanks so much for that. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page. And thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share ideas and help each other out. And you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description and it'd be great to see you there. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it gave you a good idea of what this warband's all about, a little introduction to them and what you get in the box. So thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Game.